Hi, my name's Ken, and this is Ken Fisher Photography. Now this month, April 2023, at the time of recording, Adobe's released an update to Lightroom Classic. It's now got to version 12.3. These updates are also available in Adobe Camera Raw. Now in this video, I want to take a look at what's new, including the brand new noise reduction. So we're going to be looking at that later. So just hang on. And then there's some masking improvements and some, some little minor features here and there that I just want to fill you in on, on all that's available. Okay, let's start. Let's look at two new additions to the person masking options. Okay, this is an addition to the person or people masking section. So first off, let's go to the masking. So we're going to click on this little icon here. And then we're going to wait a second. And in the people section, the AI recognizes the person. And now if I click on that, it sets up all the different parts of the person that it can find, like facial skin, body skin, eyebrows. Well, now... If there's a beard or anything involved, we've got the facial hair and we've got the clothes. So it identifies straight away and you can go straight on and you can create a mask. How cool is that? There you go, you've got a mask over the beard. Next, we've got an addition to the select background function. So here we go back to masking and I'm going to select the background. Uh, and what you'll find now is that down at the bottom of the background, the, all the adjustments you can make, we've got now curves. So we can quickly now just make either add contrast or take contrast away for different tonal ranges using curves. The next cool update is that we can now open multiple images as smart objects from Lightroom into Photoshop. Now we've always been able to do one, but now we can do multiple at the same time. So if I just select the set of images here, and then I go up to Photo and Editing, down here now I've got Open as Smart Object Layers in Photoshop. And this is an addition to the Open as Smart Object. But you have to be in grid view for it to work properly or it just does one. So I'll press G for grid view. And then I'm going to go to Photo and Editing and down to Open as Smart Object Layers in Photoshop. And we just wait a second because depending on whether the RAW files, it could take a, a couple of seconds for it to actually come up. But when it does, you'll find that you've got them all set up as layers in Photoshop. And there they are. All smart objects, all set up as layers that you can start manipulating in Photoshop. There has been a small update to preferences. I'm not really sure what it's all about, but I'm going to show you it anyway. Uh, so if I go to edit and preferences what we've got now is we've got the Photoshop version at the top of the external editing now there's only one there's only the current version Photoshop 2023 whether there's going to be you can put others in there so you can save from one version to, I, I don't know I'm not sure what that's all about but just so that when you see it you know that it's it's new <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure all will become clear in the fullness of time. Okay, there's been a small change to the, um, the develop module. Now in the panels, we've got these visibility little, uh, little eyes. And, and what this is telling us that if there's any adjustments that's been made inside that panel, uh, and if we click and hold down this mouse button on it, it gives us a before and after. So basically, this is with the adjustments added, and this is without the adjustments. So it just tells you if something is going on inside that panel. 
uh, and, and basically I think that's a, a bit of a useful thing just to be able to have a quick look and say well yeah there's the adjustments and there's no adjustments uh, now there is a little bit of a if you hold the alt key down basically and again this is another one that I don't understand if you hold the alt key down you, you find that it switches back to the the old switches type the on off switches uh, but if you let go of the it brings you straight back to the eyes again so not really sure what that's about just I suppose to have a look at how it used to be anyway um, that's it the, the visibility eyeballs to let you see at a glance if there's any any changes being made actually inside that panel next up is something it's it's very similar to the uh, to the develop module panel eyeballs feature really where it just shows you what's going on in inside a panel um, but this is for the, the local adjustments uh, and you'll see these little dots have appeared and these are exactly the same what these mean is that there is some adjustments being made um, and that you have you've used the healing tool um, and that's it that's all they do they just so if they come up and you think what on earth are these little dots is it somewhat going up with my graphics processor then no it's just telling you that there are some adjustments being made in in any of the local adjustment tools Ta-da! now for the biggie now for the main event the addition of AID noise in the detail panel in Lightroom now if we go and have a quick look at that we've got the detail panel we've still got the sharpening section and now we've got a new button called denoise uh, now the, the sliders that were there have been left in place so basically these are now called manual noise reduction so you can still do it manually because this denoise button will only work with raw or dng files it won't work with JPEGs, so you'll have to use the manual sliders if you're doing any uh, noise reduction um, to JPEGs. Right, okay, let's have a, a quick look at this file. So if, if I click to take it up to 200%, you'll see there's an awful lot of noise in it. An awful lot of noise. Let's just get it in the middle. It's jumping about a bit. Just a minute. Yeah, there we go. Right, so there's a, a tremendous amount of noise in this. It's uh, I saw 6,400 because it was it was pretty dark down there. Okay, so let's just give this one click wonder a click. So if we click on denoise, it'll bring up the enhanced preview. Um, now we've we've also got the raw and the super resolution. I'm not going to go into them. They've been there ages, um, but now we've got denoise. And we've got an amount slider so I can take this down to, to nothing or I can take it up to a hundred but that does tend to get a little bit soft and squishy no I think around between 55 and 60 is pretty good and then if you click inside this little thumbnail here then it goes a, a before and an after and a before and an after uh, I think that is pretty amazing okay and then it gives us an estimated time of how long it's going to take to to get rid of all this noise using AI uh, it says about nine seconds don't want to create a stack yeah I can stack them both together and then I can click enhance and then we just wait a second what it's going to do now is get rid of all the noise but then create another DNG file which has been denoised and there it is it's in the stack you can see we've got a two so if I click on that now you can see we've got the original which is this one and we've got the denoise version which is this one and I think that is pretty staggering it really is if you look at the before and the afters it's amazing what the difference is yeah I'm thoroughly thoroughly engrossed with this tool and I shall be using it a lot now 
the the last part of this video what I've done is I've done a little bit of a um, like a, a example uh, I've done basically the the old ver the old way of denoising in Lightroom I've done the new way and then I've I've done it I've compared it um, to what I've been using up to just uh, which is uh, topaz denoise so okay let's jump into that Okay, here we are in Photoshop and what I've done, I've just got different versions of this same image. Here we're looking at the original file and then on top of that I've got the old way which I've just basically used the, uh, the sliders in Lightroom to do what I, I think would be right for this image. Then I've got the new way which is denoise by just clicking the denoise button and then I've got topaz. So let's just zoom in on this a little bit. So we've got a little bit show you what the noise is really like. And as you can see, it is pretty horrendous. Um, it is quite high. I think, I remember, I think it's about 12,500 ISO. Um, and, and I think I just left it on incorrectly. So it really is noisy, but it's a good example. Okay, so that's my original. What I've done then is I've took it into uh, Lightroom and I've just used the, the detail sliders. And you can see that it does make a big difference. So we've got nice and soft, denoised, but the it does soften the, the image as well because it's just basically doing a little bit of softening, but it, it seems to soften everything. So you can see we're losing a little bit of detail in, in the actual bird itself. Now the new way, okay, are you ready for this? Wow, look at that. Yep, nice background, lovely background, but we've actually got more detail. And it's actually brought a little bit of colour back as well, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and if we look at just at the feathers down here, you can see that here it's quite blurry and indistinct. But using denoise, we've got a lot more detail in these feathers and a lot more detail um, in the eye and the beak. Just turn that on and off again. You can see I've got a horrendous amount more detail in there. I think it's pretty cool. OK, finally, we've got topaz. Now get ready for this. OK, it's, it's not brought us any colour through. I think... At the moment, Topaz probably still wins a little bit. But I'll tell you something, it ain't far off. It's not far off. If we look at the end of the beak, there's, yeah, probably a little bit more detail with Topaz than without it. But that's probably, I could have just moved the slider a little bit more with the denoise and probably got the same result. Okay, so have a look at another one. Uh, an even darker one and a, probably a pretty much more noise in it. Let's have a see if I can get that up a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, that is horrendous. Uh, and that's in a bit in an old building so it's there's not much light and I've lightened it a little bit and it's pulled all the noise out. Okay, that's my original. Again, I've done it the old way with the sliders in Lightroom. Um, that's not bad. It's it's certainly I don't mind a little bit of noise in the background. It, it really may I don't I don't want it too soft. So I don't mind a little bit of noise, but you can see that we've actually got rid of a lot of noise. Okay, now I've clicked the denoise button and given that a go. And that's got it even softer, but yeah, it, it seems to bring out some some colours as well. But if we if we look at the face and the beard, so that's the old way of doing it with Lightroom, uh, and that's the new way, and we've got much more detail. A little bit more detail in the eyes, but a lot more around the mouth and the teeth uh, and the beard. And now finish off, we'll do topaz. So that's Topaz, and again, I think Topaz wins out, but not by much, not by much at all. 
OK, well, that's it for what's new in Lightroom April 2023 version. Some small stuff that probably won't affect your life in any meaningful way. Uh, two additions to the people masking, which I think you'll find really useful. And the biggie, denoise, which I hope will save you a load of time in denoising with AI inside Lightroom. No need to road trip to plugins. Well, that's it for now. I do hope you found it useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment. Both will help me greatly in driving my website and channel forwards and will be greatly appreciated. Right, I'll see you in the very next video. Bye for now.